forever. Dog. Look, man. Bear. Oh, I see. Wow. Oh, my. Bowen, look over there. Wow, is that Ooh. culture? Oh, yes. My goodness. Oh, wow. Yeah. Las culturistas. Ding dong, Las culturistas calling. Hmm. Uh, hmm. Mm. Well, there's a nor'easter out there. It's a. Is it? Okay. Well, Define it. Define what a nor'easter is for all the kids that don't know because I didn't know until two years ago oh, what the you know hell what? this was. I, I never cared for meteorology. I'll, I'll do my best. Wow. <laughs> um, of the, all the Take si that, Al Roker. Of all the you sciences. You thought you did a good thing this week? No, bitch. Of all the sciences, it's... Although, which is interesting. I mean, of all the sciences, it's the most performative one, right? Oh, okay. So you're saying they need to be talented. No, but I'm saying like it's it takes... A, a meteorologists have to have star power. And have a science knowledge. Right. Which is so interesting. Oh, wait. I should, like, write a whole fucking... You should write a piece, piece on this. On this. <laughs> it should be a piece. And can I say something? <laughs> Meteorologists, often wrong? Uh, I mean, it's just their job is to predict... To, like, sort of... Um, they, they have they have a margin of error just inherent in the job. And you know it's what I'm the, I would say it's the biggest margin of error amongst the sciences. They're able to be wrong and everyone's like, yeah, but that's normal. That's weather. That's par for the course. I don't like that very much. I think it's... Lovely. I think it's a beautiful, like, ease of pressure. Like, you know, you don't have to be exact or empirical. Right, right, You can right, just right. be loose about it. Can I say something? Yeah. Al Roker, mm -hmm. fine wine. Love him. He's Better aged, with age. Better with age. And I love that he, he was the one who really spoke out against Megyn Kelly. He was the one who, I guess, well, you know, they said something on the 7 a.m. hour. Right. And then that carried over because later on, the president of NBC News Andy Lax, he was like, you're right, it's it's unacceptable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I am thrilled yes. that Megyn Kelly is I can't, kaput. of all of this, I can't believe the CAA drop. That's that's crazy. And what's even the, more the gag more is that the she gag. was in talks with UTA. <laughs> and then they said, sorry, we can't take you now. Oh, my God. So now Megyn Kelly is without, honey, a talent agent. And it's actually rule of culture number four. You gotta, gotta have, have a talent, talent agent. agent. You gotta, no in matter the field. In this talent industry, it's all about that. See, this is the thing. Like, I would assume that meteorologists have some sort of talent. You agent. know, Al Roker is WME. WME. I would. Absolutely. I would assume. I, we can look it up. We can look it up because uh, you know he's done some credits in films. And you know we have IMDb Pro account. <laughs> I have an IMDb Pro account. I pay an exorbitant amount of money for it. Yeah, it's stupid. And Just to check my star meter ranking, which is like in the fifty thousands, all constantly. Yeah, but that's actually a very privileged thing to say because you know I'm in the like eighty thousands at all times. Oh no no no! I'm always Stop. lagging behind you. Not that I keep score. Oh my goodness, we can't do this here. Can't do this here. Not in front of our guests. We'll do. We'll do couples therapy. We'll go on Naomi and Andy's podcast i feel i still am considering the couples therapy situation for no, us well no i shouldn't say that i don't think we need it no we, we don't need it yet but you should go into reg therapy. i need regular therapy and it's a sicko thing that i haven't gotten it yet and i was thinking on the train today because i was a little sad today to be honest yeah maybe it was the weather, the weather. maybe it's just the weather mm, i um, can't stand the rain baby okay um but i was feeling a little sad today and i was like yeah the therapy thing needs to happen it does for everybody. I mean, it's not just specific to you. It just everyone could benefit from it. And I'm entering a, an exciting new chapter in my therapy journey. And that means that... What you, is it? Can you share? Oh, yeah, sure. Um, It's... I, I was, like, talking to my therapist about this, like, uh, just, like, a hookup I had recently. And I was Hot. Like, and I was like, yeah, but I felt some sort of shame about it afterwards. And she was like, okay. like, And she was like, do you feel comfortable talking about this here? And I was like, absolutely. And then... Oh, my God. We're, and then like two minutes later, like I bring up the, and this is, this is super morbid and sad, but it, I don't mean for it to be, but then, I, but, but then we bring up the conversion therapy thing. And I was mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, like I at a very young age had an adult sh link shame to sexuality, sex, sexuality, mm -hmm. and like, or just sex in general. Like the exercise was like he, this, 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 ther this conversion therapist was like, when I was 17 was like, okay, let's walk through every instance you've had a male attraction in the last, you know, year this or so. This is so insane and, to me. And then like his whole, the way, the thing that he projected onto everything was there is shame associated to each and every one of these things. So he literally yeah. imprinted that onto me as I was like developing sexually. And I was like, that's, and so, and then, I, and then I didn't realize that until I didn't realize that link until there, until Current therapist was like, wait, like th this there is, it is this is something that we have to work through, and I was like, absolutely, let's do it, and I'm so excited. So it's gonna be great. I need to have things like that. It's she, it's perfect. You everyone must. Though I don't think we should have the same therapist. I don't. Think we don't. No, right. absolutely. That not. That would be a rule. She, and knows, you know, she knows a lot about you. She does. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
Well, and I'll talk about that in my therapy. So, right? Wow, wow. Okay. Oh my God. Speaking well, of therapists. Speaking of therapists, I think we have like a true <laughs> comedy therapy. Comedy therapy. She is. I mean, she is a true preeminent mind in the comedy I world. I have to say something, please. I've actually been a fan of this person. I realized for eleven years. What? Really? And here is what. It, here's why. Because knocked up. Yeah. Knocked up. You had a scene with Katherine Heigl <laughs> where you played like her wardrobe girl. Yes, yes. And she's like, I forget what it was either. She's not fitting into the outfit like she used to, or she's hungry or mm-hmm, something, mm-hmm. or both. She's frustrated. And like this man that was like trying to like talk to her is like away. And it's just you, it's just Tammy and Catherine. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And Tammy goes, You know, your baby. They want you to gain a whole mess of weight. And Catherine Heigl just goes, are you fucking kidding me? I just remember like that exchange. Like I was like laughing so hard. Me and all my high school friends were laughing so hard. And then like literally the scene ends with like (laughs) being like, I'm sorry. That was really inappropriate. And she would be like, it's okay. It's okay. It was just so good. It's one of those. But that's when I realized I first saw you. It's one of those scene stealers that you're like, who is that? And since then, you've literally written for all of our favorite shows. And I would imagine like our our listeners' favorite shows. Oh yeah, Thirty Rock, How I Met Your Mother, Mad TV, um, Amy Orange Schumer. Is the New Black, Inside Amy Schumer, and featured on Inside Amy Schumer. Girls. Oh. I mean, like truly, like this. It's got to feel good to have touched so many of these formative television shows, and we're gonna get into we're it. We're gonna get into it. Um, we're so excited to have her. Oh, and Don't Think Twice. She was. She was on. Hello, she was in the yes, movie. of course. Don't Think Twice. Oh my God, I was. I saw Don't Think Twice in this gorgeous theater downtown in Denver with a bunch of NP- Sounds beautiful. NPR loving motherfuckers and they ate it up and they ate Tammy up and so please give a warm ear welcome to our yes. guest Tammy, Tammy Sager oh my god such a fan well, such on. a fan oh, you can't say that no, because no. it's like my, I'll smile too big uh, no you guys like I was telling you I am horrified at how long it took me to find Last Culturistas does what it, just a few Ever. months ago and then I full I think I have listened to every episode, Wait. which is hundreds of hours hundreds that you've hours? spent in my brain. Oh my god, hundreds of hours! But come explain because you because Tammy just recorded an episode of Seek Treatment, yes. which I am very excited to hear. So excited to hear! It's but not a competition. It's not I a love competition that you guys have made that clear. We got ahead of the. Narrative. I watched the Instagram story about it. That's Thank how you. obsessed with you guys I am. It's yeah. just you know, there's people out there who want to watch the world burn. Uh, one of them is Joel <laughs> Kim Booster. He came on here, and you'll hear his episode of Las Culturistas coming out. Oh, it must have already come out. It right? would have come out by now. Um, yes. And he sets the record straight about the Las Culturistas versus Seek Treatment situation. I don't know that the Las Culturistas one has come out yet. It hasn't it come hasn't. out no, yet, no, no, no. but it, before this episode, it will. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, and yes. everything will be clear. Okay, but I, I have to say, even in seek treatment, he made it clear. Look, yes. no, 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 this is not a competition. Right. Okay, yes, it's yes, just yes. that this is you guys have had my friends on. Exactly. Right. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Yes. That's what it is. Tammy, Tammy knows every no, I, contour. I'm well. I'm literally have been plunged in the depths of your pools. Oh my goodness. Of my pools. Yes. Oh, listen, is content. it because you love Pat Regan? Okay. So I didn't how did, even how know. Did it come about? Okay. So Pat Regan did the show called mm-hmm. We Will Turn You Gay, yes. right? That was the name Genius. of it. At Del Close Marathon. Yes. I just stayed to watch it because I love Brandon Scott Jones. He's one of the best. One of the best. BSJ is a light. A light. Absolutely. Yeah. And so I just was like, oh, I'll see him watch it. Changed my life. Yeah, uh, it's it so good. It just reminded me of the joy of improv yes. and the joy of friendship. Yes. And also like Brian Foss, who I've <sighs> performed with for years. Yes. Mm. I have never seen him improvise like that. Oh, like, really? Physically uh. and emotionally. I was just like, okay, fuck straight people. <laughs> Honestly, like, gotta go. Gotta like, go. Like, seriously, like, Whatever. Whatever. Were Josh and Aaron in that show as yeah, well? Uh, not Aaron. Oh, not okay. Josh. Not Aaron, Josh. Was. Aaron was. Aaron was. So it was uh. Aaron, Brian, Pat, and BSJ. Ah, so And then good. I saw the Instagram stories and the Instagrams of you guys just all going out afterwards, getting a, grabbing a bite. We grabbed a bite uh-huh. at Bear Burger. Love oh, I love it. That's a part of culture. <laughs> part of culture. And... It was just like, who is this delightful young man mm. named Pat Regan? Oh, and everybody was like, whoever was at the show, I can't, oh, now I feel bad because I can't remember. Oh. And it was, was like, oh, Morgan. Morgan, oh, yes. Grace Jarrett. Oh, yes. yes. Everyone with the three names. Yeah. She was like, Pat was my favorite improv student. Oh. And like, BSJ, of course, was like, Pat's the best. Uh-huh. And I was like, okay, I didn't we got even. An old. Yeah, 
yeah, I didn't know who this Pat was. And he was like, I left improv yeah. and all this. Right. And now I just stand up. This is only show. And I was like, okay, I'm obsessed. Mm-hmm. Started following him. Yeah. And then he announced, I'm going to do this show called Seek Treatment. And I was like, that's a brilliant title. Yeah. No idea who this Cat Cohen character is. Whatever. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I love a podcast. <laughs> yeah. And so then I was like Googling it. Of course, it's not going to be on for weeks. <laughs> right. <laughs> but Gotta wait. then the other thing you find in iTunes, if you Google Pat Regan, is Las Culturistas. Yes, famously. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And then just years. Oh man. Just years. And it just you guys became my nearest and dearest. And then <gasps> my heart jumped five million feet. Like, cause you've mentioned a, like there was a Jeff Hiller episode that yeah. I was oh, like, yeah. oh we've my had, god, we've you had brought everybody. up Gravid Water that I was in a scene with him. And I was oh like, you oh. know who I am. Oh. And it just like I can't even and I've been talking about you guys to other people. I was just telling Jason Kim. Jason friends. Kim. Oh, oh yes. 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 And you guys said Jeremy Beeler on. I yes, always say Beeler, but Jeremy. it's Beeler. Yeah. Beeler. 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 Yep. I always say Beeler, but it's Beeler. Could be either. Could really be on either. paper. But it's Beeler. But it is. <laughs> fully Strongly my Beiler. friend. Let it be known. <laughs> Rule of culture number 88. It's Beeler. Beeler. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually true. And <laughs> it's real. Tammy's friend. And yeah, Tammy's and friend. he's my friend. So don't mispronounce it. We gotta have Jeremy on. We gotta have Jeremy. You on. have to. Yes, he's only done the live shows. Have, yes, yes, yes. Which yes. I've yes. fucking heard because I'm seriously have heard hundreds of hours Tammy, of you guys. I can't believe that. But I don't, you I guys can't. have introduced me to so many amazing comedic voices, including your own. Uh, but also, like, I so I was like, I've been telling people, I was like, you are the future of comedy, and then oh. I was like, no, you're not. You're fucking comedy. I was oh. like, no, you guys are like not even the future of comedy. You're just straight up comedy. No, it's true. And it's also like, then I was like, okay, I need to be more on top of things because I need to know who the future of comedy is. But like, but I y- went and saw Larry Owens Larry, because you of did? you guys. Oh yes. My God. Did you go on Tuesday at Caroline's? Yes. Oh, oh my God. I heard it was phenomenal. It was phenomenal. Fantastic. Cat was phenomenal. Yes. Amazing. Like, and the other two comics on it were great, except they're stand-ups, and like, right. they were re- excellent stand-ups. Sure. Yeah. But I don't love stand-up. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. But like, other people do. Yeah, and yeah, like, yeah. God bless. It's just. It's also like whenever anybody's like, I hate improv. I'm like, I totally get it. I get right. it. Too. I right. totally get it. But Cat and Larry are mm-hmm. just. It's a progression. There, it's. It feels like that, right? It feels like an evolution. Yeah. yeah. I always say, like, I mean, it's it's so interesting that, but. It feels like this something happened in New York, and we talk about this often, but because I also came up through UCB, and so like I was on mod for about a year and a half, and Catherine was on mod at the same time, and she did, she was, she, she was, was mod we, girl, were, yeah. we were on mod, we were on the same night, we were on different teams, but um, and I knew her just from seeing her do her characters around, she'd see me do my characters around, we kind of like you know, we're just knew each other like that, mm-hmm. and I got this sense watching her on stage, I was like. She can do so much more than what she's allowed to do right now in this moment. Mm. And I felt the same way. I felt like, you know, my, like, I haven't figured it out yet. And then, you know, there was some musicians that also crossed over with comedy. And then it kind of became this thing of like, let's sing and like, let's kind of like embrace different kind of mediums. And it just was weird because it also kind of felt like it really was the queer comedy community and like the Brooklyn community all coming together. And then UCB people who knew form really well, all combining together and just kind of mishmashing to create. And this what sort you of- guys created with, was it pop? Pop roulette, pop roulette, pop roulette oh, which yeah. I never. Free- I'm telling you, I feel like so many years behind the thing, no. but that yeah. you guys have created, like pop roulette was fun, roulette and you know, you fun. know, I always felt like pop roulette might have been. I said if pop roulette was happening right now, I think it would be huge. But because it was happening then, and we really were at the pit a lot, like, and I love the pit, but it's very, it's very community driven. Like, it kind of stayed within its bubble. Yeah, um, we did do a show at UCB for a year, but like, um, towards that point, we were kind of like the group was kind of like you know phasing out but yeah but i also have to say like there's a thing of like musical theater that is very on the margins Mm -hmm. and like it's less on the margins now Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but as somebody who cannot sing (laughs) (laughs) does not enjoy musical theater Uh like i was very much like yeah it's fine that it's on the margins like i was part of the marginalization problem but (laughs) but then there's like crazy ex-girlfriend now and then there's like larry and cat and like what you guys do and like that episode that larry was on with you guys which also first of all is i don't think so honey is i don't think so blew (laughs) my mind it like literally gave me chills i still think about it when i see him it's amazing (laughs) being there was recovered from it what's that i have nice no your friendship 
Our friend, oh, absolutely. Larry and I are, are, but then Larry the other day, Larry keeps apologizing to me, not for that, but for some something else. <laughs> but that it he, should be that. No, 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 no I'm, kidding, that. I'm kidding. It was amazing. He, he, it was amazing. Larry, Larry will say things to me all the time, and I just have, and I just like accept it for what it is, which is just him. Like, <laughs> he was like the, the other day, he was like, oh no, like people, he was like, people, it was, it was, this was the nicest thing that was also veiled in like an insult. He was like, you know, people, people like you, people as smart as you are always evil, are always are always inherently chaotic and evil. And I was like, I... Well, that's fully mean. I was like... <laughs> <laughs> I love that you're like, there's a tiny tinge of like mean to it. Oh, he was like, call no, me, he was called you bad. He called you but... <laughs> chaotic evil. And I was like, I was like, I was like, oh, I was like, um, I, maybe. I was, like, I was like, but I don't think I am. And then, and then like, 20 minutes later, he was like, I, I'm, I don't know why I said that. I'm so sorry. And I was I like, mean, don't worry. He no. said it because it's hilarious. It's very funny. Say. What a funny notion. He it, gave me a backhanded compliment as well. <laughs> he was like, I never worry about you on stage. I know you're always going to kill. And like, there's not always jokes, but like, you always kill. And I'm like, hmm, Larry. I was like, <laughs> I was here before you. Oh, I'll be here long God. after you. God. It's so funny because so seeing him at Caroline's, yeah. like, he fully, he's... <sighs> It's He's insane. Wonderful. Dynamic. It's insane. But it was also, um, I was I went with Jason Kim. Jason. And <laughs> <laughs> sorry, anytime you mention Jason Kim, I'll be like, but, oh. I, but it's also like you just use like a soundboard on your phone. Jason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it was um we were sitting at a table with this girl who brought her parents, uh-huh. which mm-hmm. was fine we loved them sure. until they did not shut the fuck up Damn. all the way no. through the show and also like the two drink minimum just meant that they were talking more and more and more <sighs> um but she just kept being like he's so nice really because he also like his stage persona is like fuck you but yeah. right, like, right, right. we'll just yeah. not say please or thank you on stage <laughs> nope. uh-huh. so i think that's like also his like comedic persona but right, i also right. think like i don't know like it's you know it's it's hard when you're a people pleaser. Totally. And if you end up like la- like me personally, mm-hmm, I'm not going to sp- mm-hmm. I don't know Larry at all. Even though I've heard him on several podcasts, but I I have to admit that does not mean that I know him. <laughs> we are not yet close. No. But um I'm a people pleaser yes. and I end up being my meanest when I am people pleasing too much cuz you <gasps> just feel like stepped on even though I'm the one doing the stepping. Oh wow. Do you know what I mean? And I do feel like I mean he always talks about like code switching. I think like Code yes. switching yeah. is automatic people pleasing. Totally. Right? Well, it's and it's exhausting and it makes pleasing you the majority. Yeah. yeah, totally. I mean, does that ever come through in in your work? You would say because I I feel like you're seeing that in Larry's sort of performance persona and like that is like like his comedy is sort of like I mean is like sort of the vessel for that thing like. When you write, is that is that a weird question? Like, no, not at all. Like, are you like in a, in a room? Like, are you? I don't know what what are the politics of that when you're in a writer's room where you're like, am it's, I trying to? It's really interesting because mm-hmm. so much of a writer's room is, and it's different on different shows. Mm-hmm. Writers' rooms are different on different shows. But um, so right now I'm at Orange Is the New Black, yes. mm-hmm. and it is the most argumentative room that I've ever been in. Really, cool. and it's wild. Uh-huh. Like I'm not used to that uh-huh. at all. And it's actually been really exciting and really cool. And we really get into it about stories. Yep. It, and it's as someone who's like as conflict phobic as I am, right. it's been really educational. Great. Do you think that that's because like people that watch Orange is the New Black, like they're not just watching it as a pure comedy. They're watching it because there are so many social issues commented One on. One million and that, and that's, percent. It's worth fighting about. One million fighting, percent. Quote, unquote, yeah. yeah, no, it is. And I would take the quote unquote off of it. Yeah. I really would. Fine. And like, and I also think like, you know, all of us who are writers there now, we're all there most of us are there from season six and right. seven. Uh-huh. Um, there's a couple who've been there from season five, uh-huh. and that's it. But but the stories from the beginning are like this is a room that argues and cares, and people care passionately. Right, and right. Genji and Tara, like that's what they promote. Yeah. But a hundred percent is because of the issues. Yeah. Well, I guess that would have to be. I mean, it's not something like you know. I would imagine like. Amy Schumer like her room is probably more is it more fun like if it's a sketch show or kind of you know I don't even know that it's as much about that I think it's also just like people not being afraid I see and Mm. you know what I mean like I I don't even because I've definitely heard about comedy rooms that are really argumentative Mm -hmm. so I don't even but the chemistry of the room yeah sure yeah 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 but I do think that this show like 
we definitely get into it. Although, like, the ugliest fights have been about comedy. <laughs> like, that's when I was like, I don't like this. Is yeah, not this, feel is, like, this doesn't feel good no, anymore. No, 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 We're no, not no. arguing about like, the greater good. No, no, it's no, like, no. no, you're not as funny <laughs> as me. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's not even like, even yeah. that general is literally like, <laughs> no, that joke needs to go in the next beat. No, it's not. A, and then it's just like, oh, wow. this yeah. is a and matter just, like, of taste. We're just hearing it differently. Yeah, we, yeah. we sometimes, like, whenever we have to, like, sit down and, like, write shit together, I'm always just, it's, there's these little moments where it's like, no, I think it's a a beat and then this line or like this line oh and then God. a beat and it's like this moment of like I don't think we'll agree okay here. no and you want to it is the ugliest it is the ugliest is. okay so two things uh, two thoughts I had one is mm-hmm. okay so do you listen uh, all I do is listen to podcasts I don't have friends <laughs> but uh, my favorite murder yeah oh uh, yeah we listen to it okay they have famously gone to therapy together yes, they have yes, a couple I've counselor and this. they are astronomically successful right 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 and yep. so it's like I don't think that's a bad idea no. for you guys no at all right because you are Probably in a business not. together totally and we've like, alluded this yeah. is a partnership yes 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 and the other thing I was going to say about writing with somebody is I really do feel like finding somebody that you write well with is mm-hmm. like a one on one that's like falling in love like it's yeah. Very special and very rare. Like, you can write with a lot of different people, but finding somebody where it doesn't feel like you want to fucking kill them and yourself all the time all the yeah. time yeah, 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 yeah i'm yeah, feeling yeah. that all the time with yeah. most people especially when you get put in a room that you didn't necessarily like you're happy to be in but you didn't necessarily choose the people in it and by didn't necessarily i mean you did not at all <laughs> like so it's like and then my thing is like you're at you're at snl now um and so now it's just kind of like because you have a lot of friends there mm-hmm. it almost feels like well i had the option to write with someone i know historically before this but that's not always the case i mean they can put totally. you on different things and then you have to navigate your own totally. emotional response response to their creative process but also even somebody that you like i mean there have been so many people that i love and i don't necessarily love writing with yeah, them sure. it's just well, a totally. different it's a different beast yeah i totally agree wow. in fact like we we now i try to whenever we're like not agreeing on something wh- uh, what i always like to say and this is the same with sudi who's my other writing partner and like you know when i've written shows with other people it's always dave i work with it's always kind of like let's vocalize the fact that this is a thing let's talk about like what it is why that we're not we're, agreeing on yeah. and potentially why because i think that'll like that'll get it out in the open and then we can really actually get down to justifying why we both think this thing and then we can move on has so- that been effective I think it has. <laughs> I, I don't. I'm just. I'm genuinely curious. Well, I think that when you're really honest, at least you can understand where the other person is coming yeah, from. Yeah. We had a breakthrough last weekend. Ooh, I we did. Hear we, about did. It. Um, we had an emotional breakthrough. It wasn't a creative breakthrough. Yeah, it was, but it was. But it was, that's it was the best kind of breakthrough. It was feel well. Okay, so here's the tea. Yeah. <laughs> so we went up to the upstate New York. Yep. Me saw the Sudi, pictures on the gram. Did, yeah, we were we were. Po- I actually was actively trying not to post because I was trying to enjoy my experience. You were because very we good did about it. for the very first time. I had never done this, but we dropped acid. Okay, and so uh, no, like, I have never done acid uh-huh. or mushrooms, uh-huh. but I've heard mushrooms are the thing to do if you're in nature. My friend, my my Absolutely. other friend, who I won't say, they said I, I, she called herself a mushrooms girl, uh-huh. and I was like, okay, mushrooms girl. <laughs> and then I was like, is that why you were like, let's do acid? But then my my you know, I don't think he'd mind me saying this my ex henry like he <coughs> was a big proponent of you know as going out and doing acid and going out in the woods and or like in like some sort of park or something to be with nature just at all psychedelics yeah so we did that and like that was amazing just like literally sitting next to a tree and being like this tree is alive <laughs> like and then later on we did have a moment where i realized that i hadn't said something to you that i think i needed to say to you yes. and you needed to hear can you share it or is i will it share personal? it okay. i will share right? it okay. i will share it so when the SNL thing came about, I feel like I'm going to cry right now. Yeah. Oh my God. Um, like then they say, well, we are offering you a writing position. And then there's that moment where it's like, well, I take the writing position. And so it's that moment of like, we're honest with each other. We're best friends. We talk about it. And, um, this thing of like, I have to decide whether or not this is happening. Yeah. And he did decide to, mm-hmm. and that he had to call me and tell me that that was happening. Cause there were plans for this podcast to move on and, and do other things. And, and I think this weekend was the first time I ever told you that had you not taken that job, that would have broken my heart. Like well, that, that would have like, and I, and then I, I just like, that was, I, when I said that to you, I realized that that was so important for me to say. Yeah. And for, I think for you to hear. Yeah. How um, did it feel hearing it? It was um, it was uh, it was really, it was like overwhelmingly emotional. Where where it just like breaks critical mass, and I yeah. just 
I had to I, I had to sit with it and like normally I'm pretty immediate in my emotional responses to things but it, it took me a long time I mean a relatively long time like and then it, and then when I started talking that's when I started to tear up and cry but yeah. like it was it was it was it was a big moment but it was and you know and the thing is too like it's weird I, th- I actually think if I, if I have to say what it is that kept me from saying that and vocalizing that because we are very emotional people and mm-hmm. we share a lot mm-hmm. but I do have to say I think it comes back to this thing of like don't be too emotional or forthcoming or like wh- whatever it is. I do think it's like what you were talking about before, the kind of repression that exists inside. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, but it's also like I'm so... Cause oh my you, God, you are crying! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whatever, oh, it's okay, it's yeah. okay. But like that was beautiful. But also like you just as easily could have said like it broke my heart that you took it and I would have totally understood where you're no. coming from. And so like I am so glad that you were at the place of it would have broken my heart if you hadn't taken it like oh, that's God. Yeah. And, and i think yeah. i always knew that but, but that's that... really like if i'm bowen like i mean wasn't there that like i could totally understand it if you would say like it broke my heart that you chose it i get it i totally yeah. get it yeah. but i also like you know what i mean totally i mean i i spent the day sort of deciding mm-hmm. i just had like give or take like 24 hours give or take a few to decide mm-hmm. Um, and Matt knew, like Matt was was there every step of the way. Like yeah. throughout that whole day, I was I was just it wasn't like an open and shut thing. It was like a I really had to like ruminate on it for like a limited amount of time because it was then, gonna be a life change. Yeah, and and so because uh, it's interesting that yeses is also noes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It, it was it, it meant no to a lot of other stuff. Um. Like it, it meant turning down other like opportunities that were happening like concurrently that were like already in motion, mm-hmm. and it was it, it it had to sort of put the kibosh on that and on 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 those things, and so yeah, it was um it was a lot. It was a very it was a very fraught day, and then I called Matt and sort of like that. I like I knew that that was like this like sort of locus of mm-hmm. the friendship that like we would refer back to for a long time. Wasn't that exactly the time that you guys went to the View? It was, the, it was, same it was day. the same day. Oh my god! Okay, <laughs> it was so, the same day. It was the talk, same day. It was like so that like <laughs> the fact that that happened the same fucking day yeah. of just like you getting your heart stepped on yeah. in such a hilarious way. <laughs> yeah, it was so and then, fucked like, up. Bowen like <laughs> fully like managing your feelings because like that was like oh you did a, a hilarious I don't think so honey but like <laughs> watching it like Bowen is fully like trying to be there for this kid who lost a hundred pounds but also then like looking at you that the video of it got Bowen so much attention <laughs> <laughs> it's no. amazing but it wasn't but you again know I was thinking about it of yeah. course but it's also I will say this as a third person it would not it only existed in relationship. Yeah, of course. Yes. So of course it can feel like, oh my God, Bowen, the slow clap. But like the thing <laughs> that was so amazing to me about it was the friendship. Mm. And the thing that I love about your guys and your podcast is the empathy and the love. Mm. And that's what all of that was. So it was also just like your, <laughs> and it is like, it is funny because it like is. I know she means everything to you and yeah, oh I need I do need to tell you oh my that God. my time at Mad TV oh, I met her the day after she won yes, because you guys because shot she the American Idol sketch with, with Deborah Wilson Deborah Wilson as Whitney it was uh, it was um, it was she uh, was Whitney it was like I it was like it was it was like all these has beens who like were completely. Oh my god, in the American fact Idol. that you remember, I fully do not. Oh my god, it was and fucking that, you know where that you know what that was. <laughs> Which then gave birth to Groove. I'm telling you, Gru it all, is it all comes Wilson around. as Whitney. Gru oh is, is derived from that. I love that you guys episode. know how oh. amazing Deborah Wilson is. Yes, oh, absolutely. Been lo- like my been Rudolph lost. is amazing. Absolutely. Amazing. Amazing. But Deborah Wilson had the best Whitney Houston. That, without question. <sighs> Fucking that cast. I will say, okay, this Stephanie is- Stephanie Weir. Stephanie, Stephanie Weir, Weir, one of the best of all time. Even just Michael McDonald as like a queer, like, but people didn't know it at the time, but you look back and you're like, yes, that was well, a Well, he was man. allowed to be on the show. Totally. I'm, but like- He's, a, he's, you know, doing gangbusters and like directs a million TV totally. shows all the time. But he also has kind of your story. Well- but it took him even longer to come out because he was Orange County, grew up, mm. and like, you yeah. know, in this like, Orange County is the Long Island of, of yeah. yeah. I believe that. Yeah. 
I believe um, that. Yeah, that cast was absolutely stacked. And you met Callie the day after she won. Well, you guys shot that the day after? <gasps> she had the same streaky highlights. I believe <laughs> oh it. Oh, my God. Remember, we, you, you can never forget those iconic blonde streaks. Yeah. Yes. As your mom famously said. As my mom famously said, you know that sh- that's the only person who can pull it off, which is so questionable. So, so also, funny. like, you are not done meeting her. Like, that was just no, not the happen. time. I-, I will say... it. I'm happy that it did not happen on live television. Yes. Because I've also talked about how I did the Stern after show the day she was on. Yes. And uh, I, she was coming out and I literally went and go, went and hid because I was like, I just can't, I'm not, this is not the time. I'm not strong enough to meet her right now. I had thought about meeting her the night before because it was happening and I was excited to be on Howard. I love Howard. And I was going to do the after show and I was thinking about the fact that I could meet her and I started to cry what would so be I, like, I can't I, meet her on television I, I get it totally I get it and you can't meet her in the audience no and no. like thankfully getting it can't a, be a public thing. it has to be for me yeah 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 so what would be like the perfect controlled environment for you to meet Kelly I think that like maybe if she was like like backstage at some uh, event or something uh-huh. I I think that I would have to like maybe like approach her and be like like and maybe if I'm like somebody that she might know, like I don't know, yes. maybe I have to be on her level. I mean, a little bit. ideally, like we're talking ideal. <laughs> ideal. She's coming to see you guys perform. <laughs> Can Do I you tell know you what I mean? Oh, so it's not God. like you have to tell your whole story from the beginning. Like she knows your that story. She knows. She, she's and going she's into coming. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want to know something fucked? Uh, what, what, yeah, what? of course. So our booker reached out to her people and they responded. <laughs> Yeah, they responded. So it is like not outside the realm of oh, possibility no. No, that not. I meet her. Of course not. But I will say this: you about, will. I, I will. I will. But that she comes on. Oh my god! Well, who knows? Anyway, <laughs> I mean, honestly, um, I'm like she's in the audience. She's like not even <laughs> like she's like fully in the no. audience. Tammy wants to flip this. Oh yeah, no, I'm flipping it. But I would never allow it. <laughs> okay, so I okay, so the other thing is is like. Yeah. Being in Second City for years yes. and like famously being around people who become famous. You are pure Chicago to me in like the best and all the best Thank ways. You. you Chicago just grew up there too. Yeah. I feel like you were like. The fact that you knew you Chicago just like makes my head explode. I feel like anyone, anyone, when you hear that anyone go, like went to University of Chicago, I'm like, hmm? yeah. <laughs> like you went through that essay process and all of that. Okay. But also it was not. It was different as, back then. Yeah. Oh, God, I mean, God, I God. did. Did did an essay, right? You did an essay, but like now it's like they're crazy. It's <laughs> well, like, now it they seems are like this so... is now a real academic thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have so gotten off on like how sure. small the percentage is of people of the that acceptance. they accept it. And this is the comedy major at university. No, 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 no. no, no. What but is it? It did not exist when I is there a comedy I, I major? Don't that Chicago? I, mean, I don't I'm know. Not, that I'm, not, I'm not knowing what you guys are talking it's about. It's just University of Chicago, just oh. like one of it's like it might as well be an Ivy League school. Oh, very prestigious guy. And and like and like they're like now like the personal statements that you write for the school specifically are like um they're not just like talk about a personal experience they're like okay now like for this this section of the essay write um a 500 word dialogue with the following words in it seagull like spoon spatula like like oh that sounds just like improv it's just like that fun, fun. It, you're, it like they're pushing you to like do stuff that you would never do how in do you know that because i because that was my, my, my dream school university of chicago Are you really shitting yep. me? No, it's true nyu was what? not your dream school I mean, no. Wow, some people dream different. That's actually rule of culture number 77. Some, some people, people dream, dream different. different. So, um, but, but I yes. still have 88. It's Byler. <laughs> Byler. She remembered the number. Okay, sorry. sorry. Some people seconds, dream different. Some people dream different. But you were talking about Second and City. 77. We got also, how much has your life been determined by the fact that you went to NYU? And isn't that so everything about everything it? Everything, everything about, about it. it. Isn't that crazy? Because, it's, because I think it's like, you know, we essentially did start our professional careers as 19 year olds. 100 percent. Which is nuts, nuts. an advantage. Um, you were talking about Second City. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so being around people that like, watching them get SNL mm-hmm. while you are across the stage from them. Oh, crazy. You know what I mean? Right. Or like watching them get whatever they get. Like right, all right. that stuff. And then just being like on stage and being like, I am the person who, when the show is happening, you're not watching me. Oh, Which yeah. is like such a mind fuck. Totally. So I've so been in that position. Um, but, but then like look yeah. at like Natasha Rothwell. Have you well, totally? Oh my god. Yeah. And who's like the star I love of Insecure. The star of stars. Oh. I love Insecure. One of the most exciting shows 
that is out there. I know. And then she's going to be in freaking the next Wonder Woman. I right? cannot believe this. But it's also like, or Jesse Klein. Jesse. Yeah, right. right. Let's face it, Matt. Nobody likes going to the doctor. It can be inconvenient. It can be very inconvenient. You have to take time off work and drive across town to talk to a stranger, essentially, about your most intimate needs. And while sometimes being... they can get intimate. And they yeah. can get intimate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, the needs. While being poked and prodded and feeling judged. But luckily, there's plush care. Using plush care is a great way to discuss with a trained physician whether Truvada or PrEP is right for you. You probably already know, guys, that... Truvada for PrEP is over 98% effective in preventing HIV. And now you can get PrEP from the comfort of your own home. And we we want to just make sure that everyone knows Mm -hmm. you should always be using PrEP in conjunction with a condom. Yes, it's actually rule of culture number 72. You You should always be using using PrEP PrEP in conjunction conjunction with with a condom. condom. Plush Care lets you see a doctor quickly via video from your phone or computer. And most major insurance is accepted. So you pay your usual copay and appointments are available every 15 minutes. Minutes. There is a reason why Plush Care is the largest online provider of Truvada in the U.S. Our visits are 100% confidential. That means no judgments, no stigmas, no side eye from a girl, your eye. They will also be working with your insurance to get your medications covered or help you find a cost assistance program. Getting Truvada is simple. Go to plushcare.com slash prep today or search Plush Care, one word, on the App Store. Book a 15-minute appointment and pick up from your local pharmacy. Use the promo code Ding Dong for $30 off your next appointment. Again, that's the promo code ding dong for $30 off your next appointment. So visit plushcare.com forward slash prep today and you can use the promo code ding dong, D-I-N-G-D-O-N-G for $30 off your next appointment. Let me ask you a question, y'all. Would you ever in your life even once buy a t-shirt for $50 if you actually knew it only costs $7 to make a I would not. And with Everlane, you never overpay for quality duds, a.k.a. clothes. Everlane only makes premium essentials using the finest materials without traditional markups. And you get to know the real cost of what you're getting, so you know you are never overpaying. I mean, I would hate to overpay for a little cheap dud. Everlane wants you to know what you're paying for and why. There's radical transparency here about every step in the process from the materials they use to the ethical factories they work with. Ethical being the key word there. Ethical being the key word there. Because Everlane sells directly to you, their prices are 30 to 50% lower than traditional retailers. Everlane's clothes look better, cost less, and last longer. Now, there are so many essentials that are um, really, 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 really great over at Everlane, including their Cotton Crew t-shirt. It's simple, stylish, and it's made from quality materials, like I've been saying. Uh, The Cashmere Crew, that's something I've seen Bowen rock 100%. I love a straight-fit denim. They got it over at the Evelyn. The Twill Weekender Bag for all you people on the go. I mean, the list goes on and on. Everlane's timeless essentials are just what you're looking for. No frills, just quality, which is actually um, uh, the title of my penis. And right now, you can check out our personalized collection at everlane.com forward slash ding dong. Plus, you'll get free shipping on your first order. That's everlane.com forward slash ding dong. Everlane.com forward slash ding dong. Forget what I said before about my penis. When you experience real joy for people that you love getting stuff in this business you quadruple the joy in your life. Mm. Like it's really like when you, and that like that is why I teared up when you were like, it would have broken my heart if you said no. Cause I was like, it took me a while to get there. And I'm so touched that you're there. And I'm not, you know, it is still a fucking process. So like it will change and all that. But if you choose to accept that joy, Mm you have so much more joy in your life. Yeah. Because honestly, everybody is getting stuff all the time. Yeah. So why not love it when people you love are getting it? Right. Do you know what I mean? Totally. Uh, I'm just like holding myself, <laughs> just like listening to, to all of this. I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't really have anything to add. It's just, I'm just so curious about... Well, and it's also, I'm not, I'm projecting totally on please, you. Please, please project. But it, it's really scary to be the person who gets stuff. Because that's also happened to me, <clears throat> mm-hmm. where I'm just like, I this is terrifying, and I feel all alone, and I can't complain about it because I'm 
more successful than my friends. And I have a friend who's still a dear friend who has a hard time, you mm -hmm. know? Just, uh, they're in that position or they're- Yeah, they're, no, not, she was in a position of not getting work. Oh, got it, got it, got it. And so it was really hard in our friendship because uh -huh, uh -huh. it was like, I can't share things with you. Sure, sure. Because I'm constantly protecting you from kind of, not a great side of your character. Right. And right. it's making you a bummer because it's also, it's not just with me that you're having this, you're having this with other friends. And it's like, it would be so much more fun if we could all just celebrate. Right. And then, you know, sure enough, because it does happen, not on our timelines, but it happened for her 15 years later that she's like, yeah, got a really big, nice thing. There you go. Good. There. And see. she, which is great. Yeah. But also, how much greater would it have been if she could have enjoyed? Everything all of us every step of the, the way. way yes and you know that's i guess too that like it just <laughs> not that we not that tripping on acid made me see this <laughs> but i was looking i was standing there and <laughs> sudi and i were like holding hands looking at the fucking sky <laughs> and i was like oh my god it doesn't matter everything is so big like it's just like we are so small mm -hmm. and all you have is like joy and like en good energy you can give other people yeah you know what yeah. i mean like the, the ego doesn't matter. Right. Like we're all lucky enough to be out here healthy and doing this kind of stuff, and like we get to like do the shit for and a how, check once in a while. Yeah, and how awesome that your friend got this. Oh, that, that yeah, got the recognition that he deserves. Deserves. Yeah, uh, uh, period. and it's also just a positive in the industry. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Because it's also like the more people we love whose work we love get yeah. stuff the better it is for us. Yeah. Because that means that everything's changing. Well, that. I mean, hey, don't think twice. There you go. There it's, obviously is media up to, to already written about isn't this. Isn't that totally. wild that yeah. he did that? What's so crazy about that movie is so Birbiglia was not from the improv world. Yeah, right, really. right. Want to it do was, that movie. He had done like improv in college. Right. Mm -hmm. And then he went into stand-up and did amazingly well in stand-up. Like early 20s was on Letterman. He was, oh, right. Isn't that wild? Oh, my God. He's such a regular guy that you forget how wildly successful but he is. But it's like him and Mulaney and Cruel were all in that little Georgetown coterie yes. where it really? blew up so yes. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also the thing difference between stand-up and improv is like you kind of blow up on your own. Totally, which is yeah. wonderful. So then he started doing improv again a few years ago. And then he did that This American Life thing. I mean, like, wasn't that it? It was like him, like him sort of, he and Ira both started doing improv at, I think it was like at Magnet or something. Magnet, uh, Ira started taking improv classes at Magnet. I right. don't know that that was connected to Berbiglia. To, to Berbiglia, okay, got it, got it. I don't know exactly, but sure. Berbiglia did a show at the Del Close Marathon called Mike Berbiglia's Dream. Uh -huh, yes, uh -huh. I remember this. Yes. And I wasn't there for that. Right. But then a few months later, he was like, I want to do that again and he asked Gethard cool. and because I lost this other job that like mm -hmm. broke my ego mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was able to go and do that with him which yeah. was such a dream so cool okay, I want to talk about this more so what are I just I, I want to talk more about the these examples of the end of one opportunity just sort of like drawing a straight line to like the beginning because it always does seem like you are someplace so cool you know what i mean I like, like oh, tammy's writing for that i, now? I mean Ugh. i just the things i just listed i was like that's the um, like contemporary pop cultural stuff for people that love television already people that love comedy well that's prestige stuff thank you i've been so fucking lucky and it's also one of those things of like the narrative mm -hmm. you know what i mean always mm -hmm. feels different than the, than the like, reality totally, right totally, right totally. it feels like different than how it is on the inside and right. the thing too so that thing of drawing a straight line that's actually a martha beck exercise oh. that is have you guys ever read her i don't know no. martha beck <gasps> is this like Love. a twilight tharp like an artist's way type of thing yes or? <gasps> yes i need it i need it yes okay. yes steering by starlight find your north star can't recommend it enough wow can't recommend it enough Soul. Oh my God. Soul. She has so many amazing exercises. So one of them is like, f think of a time that you were so incredibly happy and fulfilled and like yourself and you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and pick now a time that you were the opposite. Mm -hmm. And then you can draw that straight line between how one thing led to the other. Whoa. That's and so it, interesting. And once you do that exercise, you're like, oh my God, I did not even see that. Mm -hmm, and it's 100% mm -hmm. true. She also has this really cool exercise called shackles on, shackles off. What is this? Okay, so this feeling of, and it's hard to get yourself to do because you're like, well, I don't,
because it makes you feel bad, but it's like a meditative thing where you have to think of like a time in your life and like really do it and like close your eyes and feel it in your body Mm -hmm. where you felt like you didn't belong, you felt, you know, like nobody got you, where you felt terrible about yourself and all that and really go there and really feel it in your body and do that thing of like, how does my head feel? How does Mm -hmm. my neck feel? You know what I mean? Like really find that Mm -hmm. feeling in your body Mm -hmm. and then shake it off and then do the same thing with like a great time where you felt most and like really feel that in your body. Shackles off, Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep, and that shackles off. Mm -hmm. And then when you are trying to decide something like how it, something makes you feel because it gets so convoluted. She's like, is this a shackles on or shackles off feeling? I'm really going to your body. That's really good. Wow. Yeah. And because it, it really is that simple. It is, but it's hard to make yourself do. Yeah. Because yeah. it's also complicated because there's also sometimes it's not just a thing. It's a relationship. And you're like, how does this relationship make me feel? Yeah, that's wow. a big one. Yeah. I mean, you've talked, again, mm-hmm. listened to hundreds of hours of you. <laughs> but like your relationship with Henry, again, don't, we've like, literally just really met like <laughs> Go an there, hour though. ago. But it sounds like he's a beautiful person. He is. That, and I only know that from you. Mm-hmm. But like you've also talked about like that was a relationship that was over months before it was over. Yeah. And how hard it is to let go of that. And like, it's really terrifying to look at something of somebody that you love that's still in your body. You're like, the dynamic as it is now mm-hmm. is not right. right. And that's so scary to look at. Well, I think that what I've learned is that loving someone and having that person be right for you are mutual, are they are mutually exclusive or they're not mutually exclusive. How, how say that I say again. This? They're, not the, they're right, not the same right, thing. They're not the same thing. Right, right. Um, so. <laughs> That's what's so hard about it is knowing, wow, I'm not good for this person. This person is not good for me. Unfortunately, I love them like family. Yeah. And then I said, I said recently, like I actually said this on Catherine and Pat's podcast. I said, it's this thing that's happened over the past like eight months, which <laughs> inconveniently enough, it's happened over the past eight months when I was dealing with a lot of other stuff yeah, where yeah. it's like, you really have to move on from this relationship. I had to tell myself like, cause I had not. And, um, he sort of moved on. And, um, so I was like, wow, it's like this feeling that you have that you have to actively decide to just put away. You know what I mean? It's this thing that's never going to, because it's like, it's like something in the world that feeling already takes up space. And so it's never going to not take up space, but you have to decide to take it and like put it in the back of the closet. And maybe you don't shut the door of the closet. Maybe the doors will open, but whatever. But you do have to just put it away. But that feeling for someone else doesn't go away. And that's what's hard. But it's like and it's, something I never understood. It's meditation. It's like what thoughts that you like. Yeah. It's letting the thoughts go by or it's that, that old like Native American thing, the two wolves. Oh, oh would- no, 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 no. I was just I was just responding to you linking this back to this meditative practice of just letting something go. Yeah. 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 Where you're like, oh, just because I have a thought, I don't have to dwell in it. Totally. It's just going to go by like a car right. on the road. Right. I mean, if you're if you're talking in these terms, Matt, of putting something away in a closet, if you're like giving it some vague like temporal thing like that like I think that just means that you're displacing that feeling and you're going to address it later on this this sounds abstract but like just I mean I feel like letting it just go and dropping it completely just not caring where it lands Mm -hmm. might be like just just see how that feels yeah because there's also something so loaded about saying I'm putting it in a closet, mm-hmm, especially mm-hmm. given, uh, given, our <laughs> given, <experience>. given <laughs> your experience yeah. of a with, closet. With the closet you're right, even that imagery. I will say this, you know what I've discovered? <laughs> Muting on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> Muting on Instagram has saved my life. A yes. Little bit. Cause I, now I, I tweeted to all the boys I've muted on Instagram. Oh. Like I'm just kind of like, <laughs> If That's some if awesome. I if I get like an obsessive feeling about like someone, I mute them. Yeah. If somebody hurts me, I mute them. Because if someone's not good for me, I just mute them. And it's crazy that social media even has this power. And I was talking about feeling a little depressed a couple months ago, and Sudi was like, "It's social media." I think, especially like 
when you start to get a little bit more attention, it's exciting because yes. social media is like, hi, like we're all we're all looking. And yeah. then it's like, whoa, that's also not real. And mm-hmm. it heightens all these kinds mm-hmm. of emotions that you would ordinarily have. So the muting has been big. My friend and I, we talked about it like Big Max, where mm-hmm. it like feels really good. And then you feel like hell. <laughs> hell. It's Big Max. Yeah. It's Big Max. And it's, <laughs> yeah. It's Big Max is the title, title of yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> it's Big Max. Um, Okay, I you mentioned earlier that a lot of times the narrative doesn't match up with what's going on on the inside. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to get into too much detail. What's like for you when someone comes up to you and says, "Oh my God, Tammy, what a what an amazing sort of resume! What a, what a background! What a pedigree!" Like, I mean, what is like what what is the thing that you're dying to tell to to like the sort personal of, highlight out of debunk. the stuff that you've done? Are we, oh oh yeah, sure. Oh, okay. or that too. I was going to positive direction. Sorry, I was, yeah. but yeah, no, go positive. Sorry, yeah. don't listen to me. No, no, no. I, I, I'm not sure what I would say. Yeah, <laughs> personal highlight. I'm not. I'm not sure what I would say for personal highlight. Like honestly, probably personal highlight is some improv shows that I've done. Ooh, you're also the, one of the best. One well, the that's best. really kind. But getting to like, there's some like shows that I've done where I was like, wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. like that felt moving, and that felt moving for the those of us on stage mm-hmm. and for those of us in the audience. And I also love how ethereal it is. Mm. I love that it's fully gone yep. and it's, it's just, for us. In yeah. The moment. Yeah. I do love that. And in terms of like what it's funny, people say like can looking at the resume, it feels a little like social media to me. Oh. Where it's like you totally. have a very specific idea of what my life has felt like sure. because you've seen the jobs yeah. but it's you know you don't see the eight months where I wasn't working and didn't uh-huh. know where the next job would be yeah. and like how terrifying that was yeah. Yeah. yeah or also like it's funny like and we do it ourselves in our lives but like looking back at my 20s I'm like oh my god that was the best but I remember being in my 20s and being like what the fuck yeah. is happening I and I don't know what my job is gonna be <laughs> and all that yeah. and like yeah, yeah, where you're just like, oh, but it was so great because it was just about the joy of it. And oh, you're sure, like, no, sure. there was so much fear and uncertainty. Totally. It is, it's very rose colored glasses. Like, but I mean, you sort of can't help but have that weird, misty eyed thing about it. It's like, oh, it, it was this formative thing, but you didn't know it back then. But I definitely that. try to then turn it back onto what I'm doing now. Yeah. Like, especially when I'm feeling like, oh, then I sure. definitely try to be like, Tammy of how many years ago how would she feel like that that she gets to do this and like getting that attitude of gratitude that is a huge exercise I think where it's like whenever I start to feel really bad I'm like hold on a second and I actually like this is maybe sounds a little gross but sometimes I will list the things I've accomplished not gross just for myself fully healthy and I look at it and I'm like fuck yeah Yeah. like I did all I did so many other things I wanted to do Mm -hmm. honestly like it's like when I was like, you guys are the future of comedy. No, you're just comedy. I'm just the end of comedy. <laughs> but like, no, but I, do wow. feel like, I do feel like such a, like a kinship to you guys yeah, and yeah. like to you, like how I was in my 20s. Do you know what I mean? Oh. Like, I mean, I've been, I, I like, this is so crazy. But like when we had Fran Gillespie on the show, I said to her, I was like, you were the improviser that I used to seek out. You know what I mean? Like when I was going to UCB classes and there was also you. I mean, I remember Tammy, AD and Spo. That was one of my favorite shows that I had seen. Tammy, AD and Spo. And then Tammy and Spo did did like a two-prof show like a couple years back at DCM, right? Or was it Tammy? Was it always Tammy, AD and Spo? It was was Tammy and Shannon have friends. Tammy and Shannon Shannon have friends. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Okay, so that was just so great. And like, and just, it's crazy to even be... Like that, my friends. That I'm friends with Brandon Scott Jones. You know what I yeah. mean? I like, totally get it. That I'm friends with Josh Harbin and Jackson. You know what I mean? It's just like, and I think they would like roll their eyes and say, "Okay, bitch," and me saying that. But like, really, that's those things that that is meaningful. I mean, and the, you guys and like all those people are the people that inspired. I know us to yeah. even do what what we felt was like in our hearts to do in comedy. But you know it's what I mean? by doing what you guys feel in your hearts like this podcast feels so true and that's like what people respond to and that's like why i do feel like kelly clarkson is gonna be on <laughs> like, she'll you know be what on. i mean she'll like like that's how it's gonna happen can i tell you why i think I-, I love her so much and i know why 
It's because she broke out. I think I've told you this. When she like broke out, <laughs> I was 12. And so I think I had just found, realized I was gay at 11. When did you realize you were gay? Oh, I can't put a time to it. That's so funny. Well, I, you can, I can remember the Also, moments. you... If, I don't know that you've ever talked about conversion therapy on the podcast. Not on the main not podcast. Not on the main pod. Um, yeah. I've, Wait, what's the non-main pod? There's our... Um, Patreon. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've done the so Patreon So are you still stuff. not going to talk about it? No, I'm, not- ha- I'm happy to talk about you guys. It's a Patreon exclusive. We <laughs> well, talk about conversion The thing is, because like, we do the RuPaul's Drag Race recaps on oh, Patreon. Uh-huh. Yes. A contestant this year, Dusty Ray Bottoms, talked in depth about going through conversion yes, therapy. Wow. Yes. And so when we were reviewing that episode, Bowen did detail a little bit of his I experience. detailed it. Um, but yeah. Uh, and it's so funny because it was something that I thought I had like rear view mirrored behind me for all these years. I was like, I'm, I'm so past that. I'm a, I'm, I'm living but out loud. How as did gay. it happen? So it was, um, it was the first sort of outing, which wasn't even an outing. It was just my parents finding this like saucy, like I am transcript. And then with who, with just some random guy and on the internet, on the internet, just it was a gay robot. It was a gay robot. It might as well have been. Might as well have been. And then, um, so they found that. Um, and it was just like two weeks of just coming home to like my parents like crying us like us all crying at the dinner table. I'd only seen my dad cry once before this when my grandpa died, and then I would just come home to him crying every day. And I was like, "What?" I was like, "I, I was." And then eventually, you're just like, "I have to fix this," mm-hmm. and so you'll do you anything. Feel a responsibility. Totally. And then, and then my parents. Uh, just having this sort of gap in cultural understanding, which I don't begrudge them for at all. They were just like, well, this is a problem, and what do we do? We fix we fix it. Mm-hmm. Um, P.S. There's plenty of Native Americans, uh, not Native Americans, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> white Americans. Who do the same. Yeah, yeah. totally, yeah, so totally. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, they found this, we grew up in Denver, they found this guy in Colorado Springs who went by an alias and who like, had very just had a very sort of why did he go by an alias because uh they constantly get harassed by like activist groups and all that that stuff. are trying to do the right thing and shut this down. i yeah. love that he is cloaked <laughs> he's in the victim. shame yes yes he's yes. in himself closeted he's literally cloaked in shame doing this thing where well, he's then, telling that so, shame yeah, right exactly exactly there are so many layers of shame to this because um but anyway it was he was in colorado springs like we're focused on the family as like all these like mega churches are super religious rel- f- religiously fertile place and is your older sister is she like off in college at this she's point? off in college at this point she's trying to um and yang uh, i think she's listening she's trying to um sort of straddle the line and sort of play to both sides and she's she i don't give her the credit but she really had to moderate and mediate a lot of stuff back then and, and from far away from far away yeah. she was doing something like and I, having her own formative experiences in college. I'm totally. Sure. Like she, you know, for her to sort of be like, like, you know, sort of lured into this other but thing. But that's so, like, it's, I think it's very different being Chinese. Yes. But being Israeli and like uh-huh. we moved when I was three and my brother yeah. was 13 and my sister was eight. Mm-hmm, like it's mm-hmm. also like you feel like your siblings are the only ones who really get it totally. with your parents. Totally. And so even like when my parents were being wrong, I still fundamentally felt like they were being right. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So it's also like I would be surrounded by people being like, that's insane. That's ridiculous. And being like, well, but you have to see it from their point of view. Right. So that's where a sibling really comes in because they see it from their point of view. That's essentially what she did. And, and then at first my response was just was to lash out and be like, how can you like th- th- like how can you sort of not pick pick a side? Like, how can you try to understand them? Because because you're, your but, dad crying. because you're the one who's in pain. I'm the one. Yeah, but it's totally. also. But so are they. So are they. So are they. And it's so unbearable. So yeah. Watch. So so just would would you know drive an hour and a half each way with my dad, and then those were. <gasps> I mean, those were actually bonding experiences between me and my dad. Weirdly, wow. where we would just have like conversations that had nothing to do with. But it's like three hours day. of one-on-one car time, which is like you know fraught and whatever. But wow, that wasn't even. I mean, that was like the highlight of the whole thing because the the sessions themselves were. Just, I mean, they started out as just plain old therapy, like talk therapy. With somebody with a really fucked up agenda. Totally. Someone with like, you know, quacky diplomas on the wall. And then um, by the end, that was when he started this exercise of just let's walk through all these different times you felt attracted towards a man. How did you feel in your body? 
he would just try to apply these like oh, other, God. just like like didn't you feel terrible about yourself while you were attracted to this oh, person? That's what God. that's what the God. source is. And then by the end, yes. When in your adolescence do you feel anything sexual and not feel <laughs> and not feel yeah, horrible, horrible. Crazy. <laughs> already? <laughs> totally. And then and then yes, the, that's true for everybody. That's true for everyone. And then the last session um, was when he was just trying to like just like give me some parting wisdom about the whole experience. Wait, so was there like we're gonna do twenty sessions or was it like it was limited because it, the timing. Of it was I was going to college immediately after oh this. This is the God. summer before college, summer before NYU. Getting you all, getting you all closeted for NYU. For, Such a for, fucked for, up shame. And your parents <laughs> just being like, "Oh my God, we have to do this." Well, yeah. um, and then, but, but the the NYU thing came out of, and it's so funny that just all, everything that's happening now is, is 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 sort of like a result of that. Is is butterfly affected out of that? But is mm-hmm. is my sister was already at NYU, oh. so she was sort of the watchful eye and that's like an, another thing that like she was foisted with and oh, that we God. haven't talked about but um anyway you need to do acid with her i need to do acid with her <laughs> yeah she's um, a mom i don't know she's a mom but we'll find a sitter but she um <laughs> she's not breastfeeding she's anymore not, no totally um but uh the last session he just tries to like he just starts going into this anecdote about a former patient of his i.e him who well, he's and he he starts he he narrates in the third person. He was like, well, so, so this guy's driving down the highway in California, gets off at San Bernardino. It's two a.m. He stops by a Denny's, and then he looks up, and the waiter's there, and the waiter starts making eyes at him, and and then he switches to the first person, and then he's like, and I was like, I'm am I really gonna have sex with this guy? Like, starts to sort of, and then catches himself, <gasps> like mid story, being like, oh. I just, I just outed myself. Oh my god! She was like, this was a couple months ago, and like, this is a couple months ago. Like, 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 like this is a couple months before, like, before this, before this last session with him. Yeah, he said this had just happened. This, so this, yeah. this had just happened, and then it was like very obvious to me that I was like, oh, this is all a fucking sham. Yeah. So thank God you got that little peek. Totally. Where you like, this is does not work. Does not work, and even the person who is administering this kind of quote unquote treatment. That I was thought I saw boy erased. We need this movie. Oh, stop! And then one million percent like that. Honestly, I I was just like, you got to write this. You got to write this. this. I don't know. You got to write this. You will one day. You will will one day. One day. And the best part was after like my dad had very politely been like, if you have any sort of referrals for people who do this in New York, we would love that. (gasps) And then the funniest to me, this is the funniest thing in the world. After our session ends, we're saying our goodbyes, and then he pulls out this sheet of paper and he goes. So um, these are the names I was able to find of people who do this um, in New York, but um, you know, it's not a lot of it's not a lot of people, and the closest person is in mm, New Haven, and, you know, like some like Connecticut town, like mm-hmm. fifty miles away. And I was like, oh yeah, okay, this is n- we're not going to keep this going because people don't do this like in New York, and they just don't do this in general, like. He was, I don't know. And it no was, wonder there was no one in New York because th- you wouldn't be able to, A, keep that practice running in New York, totally. and B, like they're t- you're exposed to the but fucking right things. What's so terrifying to me about like, okay, that's so obvious and blah, 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 mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. then it's our fucking vice president. Yeah, yeah. It's somebody right. who yeah. absolutely believes in it and puts money totally. into it, and you're just like... <sighs> yeah, I don't know. So anyway, that's that's the whole sort so of. So when story did you it. come out to your parents for real? And we're like for real. Um, this was, it was beginning of senior year of college. So it was so it was it was like me kind of going back into the closet after my sister graduates at semester. I come out to all my friends, like I e Matt and the rest of the comedy people at NYU, and then spent about a year and a half closeted again, mm-hmm. um, or closeted to my parents, but out to everyone else, and then. That sort of. Sort I remember of, when you even came out at college. It was like something you had said, but like it was like we were to take it with a grain of salt. It felt like that. Really? It was like, it was like not confirmed information. Oh, interesting. Yeah. What do you mean? Like it was like it was. Uh, we had heard that he had come out and went back in the closet before, and this is not when we were as close as we are now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This um, is when you were fighting over that girl. This is when <laughs> <laughs> that sure poor mom. girl. Yeah, I know. That poor girl, girl is like, <laughs> oh my god, just like. I have no one in my life. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's doing great. But I met you. I, I met you when we were both quote unquote straight. Right. And then you were, I was gay first and then you were gay. But, uh-huh. but we were told that you had been also gay 
two years before, and then you went back into the closet, and so we no one was really could be sure. Oh, oh my interesting. god, that's so <laughs> college. So funny. I don't know if I can trust him. Oh we my god, it's so, can... it's so college. It's so college. Um, wait, we have to ask Tammy the question. We haven't even even asked Tammy the question. Let me put my button on what okay, I said before, which on. was the reason I liked Kelly Clarkson is because being twelve. <laughs> Um, I saw someone I have America fall in love with someone for being who they were and yes. I thought wow yeah. maybe someday someone will fall in love with me for who I am oh. and so then I like was like well not yet but maybe <laughs> one day I'll come out of the closet and then then I can be Kelly Clarkson levels of beloved <laughs> but you saw her and you hung you hung that hope on her in a way she was huge for me because yeah. she was I just saw like America fall in love with her and I, she seemed like you know, at the time, I think I was e- very easily manipulated by that shit. But it's like she was the perfect George W. Bush era girl next door. But she wasn't because she was also being told nonstop she was too big. Yeah, like by yeah, like yeah. by the gatekeepers, by yes. Sam, you know Simon Cowell. It very easily felt like it could be Justin Guarini. You know what yeah. I mean? Oh, I, sure. I think I wouldn't have been surprised either way. But I think, I mean, if it is rigged, which I'm sure those shows are. Um, I think they made the right quote unquote right decision. Um, <laughs> and the I, right reg. Like, but um, yeah, I think that the reason she's been so lasting is because I think there's an entire generation of of women who look at her and they say, you know what? I don't have like a stick thin physique. My weight fluctuates. And I think a lot of gay men do attach to her because I think at a very formative time, like, she was like relentlessly herself and her personality. And I think everyone kind of just like really gravitated towards that. She's just authentic in a way. And also obviously incredibly supernaturally talented. But I do feel like that authenticity, even more than the fans that it attracts, because as you are seeing on social media, people liking you is a fickle fucking beast yeah, absolutely. Yeah. and will change. And you just cannot, it's like a, I think it's an Al Anon thing that my friend said to me was like, other people's opinions of you are none of your business. Doesn't matter. Wow. And I was like, wait, but it's literally my business. <laughs> and she's yeah. like, it's really not. You yeah. think it is? Ugh. It's literally none of your business. Yeah. And you can lose your mind about it. Oh my God. But like her being authentically herself, I feel like is what has made her be consistently able to make music. Right. Mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? And whether or not people like the music is... And she'll always remind you how good she is. Like, that's the thing is it's like, she's never going to stay in the limelight because of a stunt she pulled. She's going to stay in the limelight because she was fuck. She gave an amazing performance on some show. You know what I mean? Or like, she, like that's the thing is it's like, it feels like every three years, like she has like a viral moment. Like when she sang it at Obama's second inauguration. My country tis of thee. It was like just so unbelievable. And that that's more famous for being the I time. love it because I don't remember it at all. I <laughs> well, don't remember hearing about it. You'd be like, everybody because, knows. Well, no, first of all, I'm happy to put the spotlight back on it because <laughs> go go check out that performance. Everybody it was remembers. A slay. Everybody Nobody's remembers. thinking about Beyonce performing at no, that inauguration. Beyonce, that was the one where she famously lip synced to the national anthem and Kelly sang live. <laughs> oh just my like, God. Minutes, minutes You're before. You're really going to. I'm sorry, but it's true. I'm, it's not a jab. It's just people remember it for being that. But also, that was a moment for Kelly <laughs> Clarkson as well. <laughs> people remember. Oh my gosh! So it also like having just seen Larry Owens perform yeah. and like starting to cry just as he's about to go on stage. I was like, "What is it about this?" And it's like, "Oh, it's because talent will out." Yeah. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. like, yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. not even about like what other people say. It's like how much I've internalized that shit. Yes, and yeah. just like I feel like. Kelly Clarkson, I'm sure she internalized shit, but she also didn't let it shut her up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And she is outspoken, too. Very outspoken. (laughs) Um, Let's ask the question. Let's ask the question. Tammy Sager, what was the culture that made you say culture is for me? Honestly, Second City, because we saw it when I was a kid. Like, I grew up in Chicago. You grew up with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We grew up, and my parents would go to Second City, and... This is at the time where, like, you'd go and they would sort of decide where you sit. Uh-huh. And my mom would fully lie about not being able to hear well. <laughs> <laughs> so we'd sit right up front. Yes. I was so who way would you too see? young. I saw Steve Carell. Wow. I, yeah. Oh, wow. And Bonnie Hunt and wow, Dan Castellaneta. Dan Castellaneta, too. Yeah. Oh, Mary my God. Gross. So, like, Tim Kazarinsky, like, since I was a little kid. Wow. And oh did not God. understand most of this stuff. But no, I fully remember seeing Steve Carell and Steve Colbert <gasps> were in a show together. Oh, my God. Wow. Where they did, the, they did the waiter bit, maybe? Or was that before or after that? Anyway. That's so amazing. I don't incredible. remember the waiter bit. The waiter bit where they're, um, they're just like... Like they they for some like they're explaining the specials of the night and they just for some reason it makes them super nauseous so they're like 
<laughs> so they're just like 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 on the verge of vomiting as they're describing. Oh, that's these, so like, funny. Like, I don't remember that. It's so funny. But wait, that's oh my god. So w- what was the biggest difference between? Okay, we'll talk oh, about. But 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 also I have to say like seeing Second City and being like, and this is also when people in Second City weren't blowing up. Sure. Like even yeah. like maybe they'd get SNL. Uh huh. Maybe. Like that was the biggest thing, but sure. it wasn't like Judd Apatow times. Totally, totally. So I remember seeing Steve Carell and being like, "Oh, that's so sad. He's never <laughs> gonna be anything because he's so talented." <laughs> yeah. And then it was like, "Oh, he's on the Dana Carvey show that doesn't last, you know, more than yeah, a minute." And then totally. it was like when he fucking got Forty Year Old Virgin, mm. or even like when Anchorman happened. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh. Wait a minute. Oh, so yeah. And then you, but you were pretty much ingrained in that system at by at that point. Maybe not even like so. Uh-huh. I was a math major at U of C, uh. and like I really didn't see how it was going to happen. But then I did. <laughs> I wrote a paper about improv, yeah. and yeah. So then I be- got into the improv group there, and mm-hmm. that's when I was like, I love this so much. Wow, Tammy. I mean, you are basically. Uh, yeah, I totally spaced. I knew you were a math major at U of C, but I totally spaced on just this. The the, tra- the trajectory being like it's not necessarily a straight line either it for you. It didn't feel like, and it didn't feel like I would ever get anything. And it also mm. felt like I remember when I was like, I got it. I'm going to submit to some shows, and like somebody from Daily Show had like fully told the producer, and I was on main stage, mm-hmm. you know, which is like the highest that totally. you can get, yep. and like said, like we're looking for writers, and the producer there didn't. He decided who he wanted to tell to submit, and I wasn't one of the people. Wow. But I, you know, like, and and this is what I've, I haven't taught a ton, but when I have taught, I've always been like, don't worry about impressing me. There's a million people that I'm trying to bring up right now. <laughs> but I'm like, <laughs> but everything that I've gotten has been through people that I've come up with. Yeah. yeah so yeah. Alison Silverman, who's yes. a brilliant writer and, you know, one of the, you know, original people at Colbert right, but she was right. at the Daily Show and she worked there uh-huh. and she got that who knows I still don't quite understand how she got it because she got it from like working on like you don't know Jack a game show on we, like we just played you don't know Jack last night yeah. with Pat oh my god the newest one the fifth one yeah uh, sorry so she worked on that <laughs> as like a video game and especially in Chicago at that time felt like you were nowhere yeah uh-huh, you uh-huh, know uh-huh. and I was like how did you get the Daily Show and she's like you know the, there's certain types of year that you submit. I'll tell you when. Right. She told me when, and it was like I, you know, I, and I got that job mm-hmm. offer. But I also then got the job offer at Mad TV. Right, right. And then <laughs> I chose Mad TV, uh-huh, uh-huh. which I'm still like, okay, I did that. <laughs> no, yeah, I love yeah. That. I love that. But it was also I because it. I didn't. I didn't fundamentally want to write sketch or jokes. Yes, yes. I wanted to write longer narrative stuff, and got I just it. like. It was very hard decision. I had that like mm-hmm, twenty four mm-hmm. hours of like, what am I gonna do? Sure, sure. And then, uh, yeah, and then I decided to go. Man, it was also this is how long ago it was, but it was right before. It was before Daily Show was Union, right? Oh, that's it was pre nine eleven. Wow, and, 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 that, became, and that TV was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and, there you go. And it became. I mean, because Comedy Central, but it became Union very soon thereafter. Got it. Got it. Um. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I'm curious about what was the gap between you graduating college with a math degree and you thinking I'm going to do this I'm going to do this comedy thing it's weird because so I um I got hired for something called Boom Chicago which is a oh, right so was oh that my Amsterdam? God. yes yeah, okay. yes was this close to going I was like in a final callback for that oh my god I thought this might have been the thing that was like four years ago yeah it's wow. so funny I didn't know that you did that I did oh wow what was that experience like it was really good it was the third year so it wasn't even year round like now they like sign people for several yeah. year long right, contracts right. yeah yeah it was a two year thing that was, it was like a two year commitment crap yeah mine was like seven months wow oh wow yeah, and it was like you fully had to go and hand out newspapers that like advertising oh. the show. Like you had to do two hours. It's called cronting for every oh show you did. God. And I was oh so God. bad at it <laughs> that I ended up like doing bookkeeping. Like, can I do this? But I got it while I was still in college. Wow, great. And it actually was the beginning of turning things around with my dad because things were really bad uh-huh. with my dad. And I got this. I wasn't supposed to. We had this fucked up agreement where I wasn't supposed to do any theater. Wow. And it was, but at this point then, I was in therapy. Mm -hmm. And my therapist, we had gone to therapy 
with my parents and me, and then it was just turned into therapy with me. So uh-huh. then it was like she kind of had this role of like she knew my parents. Yeah. So I didn't have to spend the whole time defending them. Does mm-hmm. that make sense? Mm-hmm. And explaining what the, yes. the dynamics was. So we had this that. fucked up agreement where I could live not at home as long as I did not do any theater, inc- which included <sighs> even taking like a class. Wow. And she was just like, yeah, they just want you to lie. Like they've set up a situation where you lie. And I was like, okay. <sighs> So I performed wow. under the ridiculous stage name of Sadie Cohen because oh, I was like, everyone Sadie needs to Cohen. Title, title, title up <laughs> Sadie Cohen. Sorry, sorry, Cohen. <laughs> and like, Sadie yes, like Cohen. I needed a stage name, but I got this job yeah. and it meant like, oh shit, I'm gonna have to go to Amsterdam. I'm gonna have to leave yeah. college before I graduate. Yeah. Oh. Um, and I remember calling my brother who's 10 years older than me yeah. and being like, how do I do this? Because what I was going to do is just call and be like, I got this. I'm going. Yeah. Bye. Wow. And he was like, instead of asking Abba for permission, ask him what he thinks. Okay. Like, not asking for permission. I'm asking for, like, advice. And so I did. Mm. Wow. And it wasn't like, can I do this? It was like, hey, this happened. Didn't get into the details of all the auditions that I should not have been doing. Yeah. Right. And. <laughs> or what a selective process that is. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. And also he couldn't understand that it was like a real. Well, again, this is how long ago it was. It was like when there was this book called Let's Go, like uh-huh. Let's Go Europe. Uh-huh, and they uh-huh. had just had a shout out and Let's Go Europe. So it was like this. Like, yeah. It was a real thing. Prestige yeah. thing. Yeah. And so he was like, OK, let me think, you know. Mm. And then he came to the conclusion, like, I should go. Wow. <laughs> Which was like, OK, well, I'm you going anyway. Like, like, so who was there while you were there? <laughs> um, So this was before Seth Meyers. Yeah, like before, he went right. the year before. He went the year after, after. I should say. Oh, yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. Wow. Amazing. So, um, yeah. Oh That's God. crazy. He's one of the ones they say now. You're like, and Seth Meyers did. Oh it. no, that like, he was the one who broke it open yeah. for like everybody. Yeah. That's so but, cool. But then coming back from that, you know, and also I started college young, and I'm born in December, so I was there at like 20. Wow. So even though I'd like wow. taken time off from school, sure, sure. and I graduated, like it all ended up being okay. And then I got back, and I got second city within a couple of months Amazing. right because at that point they they knew like you had been real seasoned by y- you can just tell yeah. on the audition you can just tell mm. that somebody's like Ready been on it. stage yeah, yeah. and so cool. uh so i really was really lucky so i just came back and i just finished up school i just had like a class yeah yeah so i finished up and had a gig great but you finished up just in, and gra- and graduated with the degree yeah 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 great amazing i mean not that like either no, way no no but fine, i was but... you know i didn't have a high school diploma uh-huh. so uh it was important that i get a college diploma so yeah. cool i mean a math major at university of chicago would have a math degree from university of chicago would have made my dad like Oh my god! I can't even explode. tell you how much I understand all of that stuff and like seeing sure. a fucking yeah, it father is a cry. Very, it's a very similar. Um, totally, it is. It's, it is trajectory. It's, it's you know. Yeah. It's 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 intense. An immigrant father crying is like oh, oh my something god. happened. When you know how much they've sacrificed. <laughs> oh yeah. And this is the thing. Okay, and just to really quickly loop it back to like the 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 parental thing with the conversion therapy thing. I'm reading Joy Luck Club right now. It's all about mothers and daughters and forgiving each other mm-hmm. and, and and daughters forgiving their mothers about wrongs yes. and the other way around. Mm-hmm. It's it's the most beautiful thing. Just to like not care. I don't like I don't hold it against. I truly don't hold it against them. And it takes a long time to get to that place. It took me too. so long to get yeah. to that place cuz for a while I even wrote a terrible solo show about this. I did try to write this in some sort of... It was of, not terrible. It wasn't great. It was, it was a reflection of where soon. you were at. Yeah. It was too soon and I, it, it, it just, there were no jokes. It was not a... F- it, was not a f- it, was a it was part of a comedy solo show festival and it was just no jokes, devoid of jokes. But I would say there could have been more jokes. Sure, there you go. <laughs> I don't know if there were none. <laughs> Very but diplomatic. Larry would say, it was still hilarious <laughs> even though you had no jokes. He still trusted me on stage. <laughs> um, I... Oh my God. And so yeah, I mean, it, I, at that point I hadn't forgiven them and now it's like, oh... I read the Joy Luck Club. And the audience <laughs> can tell. You yeah, know what I yeah. mean? The audience can tell when you've forgiven. And yes. they don't, it doesn't, they're not, they're uncomfortable when yes. we're uncomfortable. When we're uncomfortable. It's chilly. Yeah. They're chilled. Um, Tammy, I have to ask you before, before we move on, I don't think And so then many. I have to, I have a have to ask you as well. Okay. I just, I really want to know. So I just really want to know, Tammy, um, what is like, like say you're uh, just writer creator of, of your own show. What what is that? Because I'm so curious to know this. Just having this such a diverse 
like granularly diverse sort of resume and not to like bring that back up but like i am so curious to know like what like the tammy sager sort of yes imprimatur is i don't know cool. and it's actually been like a real like sticking point and i recently and i'll talk to you guys about this off pod because mm-hmm. you're connected to it funnily enough oh. but like when i feel like i have no ideas it is such a dark dark feeling but like right yeah. now i just don't care about my That's story <laughs> <laughs> do you know what i mean and it's also just like i don't i I just don't, I just don't, I just, it's that time where I'm like, I care about some other people's stories. And so I just, I've been listening to something. I'm like, oh, I think this is a show. Got it. But I don't know what my show is. Well, I don't, well, I, I'm not even necessarily asking like, what is the Tammy Sager no, show? No, no, I, I know what you right, mean. Right, right, right. But even this, where yeah, I'm like, this it. is a show that I feel like I could run with these uh-huh, and uh-huh. I'm inspired by these people. But like, I don't even know. That's fine. That's, that's, it's okay. I mean, I, yeah, I thought like during this break from, from SNL that I would have all these ideas and I would work on all this stuff and like whatever like I have all these premises thought out but like didn't even feel compelled to like put pen to paper no you gotta fill the well sometimes I think the scary thing about like the past like maybe even not year like past like eight months for me it's just like I've always every year just always spit out so much creative stuff like you know me I know you like and uh, like I'm always creating and this year and this kind of like last eight months I think because I have a lot of stuff personally going on it's just so much going on up here and I think that's why I need a therapist I haven't created as much and that's got me in such like a funk you need you need to fill the well that's what I need to yeah, fill yeah. the well yeah, yeah and also stop beating yourself up for like what your that? perceived production is because it's that? also like as somebody who listens I'm like you're producing all the time well that's another the other thing is just like like we sat around the table at our acid trip and they were like everyone say one good thing that you're proud of over the past year and they all went around and it was coming to me and I was like oh my god I have nothing to say I don't know what to say but it's not I have nothing to say and then I just started crying of course I was like I was like oh no and then and then literally as I was there I was like wait hold on a second like this is classic in me like killing myself for no reason but that's also why it's great that you're with people who love you who know you who can be like Mm -hmm. this and also this and also this it was important um, yeah it's just like that's like something I shout out to everyone as much as hard as I can it's like go easy on yourself y'all we're all trying our best and do drugs and do drugs Oh, oh my god, god, I would never. <laughs> no, the thing Dude, is, like, I also really don't think that's like I feel weird about saying this. I was just like, because we're so honest on this podcast. Sometimes I'm like, when on when is too honest, too honest. Um, but I'm like, you don't need to do drugs to get there, people. Don't, don't, yeah. <laughs> oh no, and I fully, I don't. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, and actually, like me getting high shut me down so hard. Yeah, I think totally. that there, I think there's also something to that. Yeah. yeah. So no. I, I just think there's no blanket thing for anybody. No, it's yeah. very true. Well, what's your have to ask? Oh, here's what I have to ask. What was Katherine Heigl like? Oh, oh my God. Okay, so I've wanted to tell you this. Yeah. That, this and also the, oh, I have two things to tell you. That and also about Tyra Banks. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my God, okay. yes. Um, Katherine Heigl was a fucking delight. Yes. And I bet she, was. she was loved on set, like, Whatever, yeah. I was there for a matter of hours. <laughs> but like Judd loved her. Like yeah. she was a delight. I this is the first time I'd filmed every anything. Yeah. So, so cool. I fully yelled my lines because they were in the other room. <laughs> so I was like, it's fine. <laughs> and I, I was just like, she was like, I felt like she was whispering to me. And then I was like fully projecting so they could hear me. And then Judd like came in, he was just like, just a little smaller, just a little smaller. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, he means just like whisper, just like so. Then I just like concentrate on talking really quiet. Honestly. Like that was screen me. acting is just talking quietly. Oh my god, <laughs> Alec Baldwin like straight up just whispers. Right, that's what Tina says too, yeah, right? Yeah, like yeah. In Bossy Pants, she's like he just like speaks at a low whisper, and yeah, a low, and a low decibel, and then you're like, oh, but it's all there. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like that's part of it too, where you're just like because especially as a live performer, you're like, oh, okay, well I'm selling it's time it. to perform. Yeah, and that's it's like it. all those instincts just shut it down and just like trust that <laughs> your be. eyes. Yeah, well just be as hard because then you're just <laughs> yeah. like I'm really big and yeah. like just be I'm big too no but then it's like if you just concentrate on talking really quietly like it all just sort of happens <laughs> <laughs> it just but happened right fully, now in this yeah, yeah right you just like it's weird I got I got pulled in I was like whoa well, yeah. I know it's so but it was like if you just told me like to be small or whatever I'd be like I can't but it's you're just like just like, so just, she like, was whisper. <laughs> she was a delight she was loved on set she was loved on set she was a delight and then it was such a bummer when that well, it was came so, out and because honestly, I because you guys really were sucks. just talking about it because it was also like 
It wasn't like a few months after it came out. She was like, oh, it would have been cool if my... It was like opening weekend. She was like, it was a bummer and all this. I was like, oh, dude. The timing Here's what I think. I think she could have... I think a bunch of things could have happened. She could have waited to maybe express that particular opinion, Mm -hmm. even if it was justified. Right. I think everyone could have maybe read that whole article because there is context involved. I'm so not with you on this. I think that uh, I think that Judd and Seth were way too harsh on her. They were not though at the time. At the time, uh-huh, they uh-huh. really handled it graciously. You think a hundred percent? They're still I talking remember. about it like as of recently though. Well, and I think that's. I feel like people ask them about it. Yeah, sure. that's true. But also consider how much fucking work that they did. Yeah, mm. like when you're directing and writing a movie yeah. and like. As somebody who's fully acted in like one and a half things. <laughs> but like, it's so much easier. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Totally. And it's like, she got to come in yeah. and be a star of a movie yeah. that the other star was like hustling and writing and You're doing right. all this work yep. when the director is doing, and he's also like throwing all this stuff out and then in editing for a million months. It was their baby. She is, they have done so much water work yeah. uh-huh. and then she gets to be a fucking movie star, star off yeah. of it yeah. Yeah. and for and she like, won an Emmy basically for that movie she didn't win for her, that season of Grey's Anatomy I'll tell you she wore because the buzz had, had been the such a groundswell had, the yeah. buzz had hit and it was time to award her but, she benefited and, from that movie in huge ways and then the thing like the thing that really sells me of like dude this is on Catherine not on them at all yeah. is what she fucking did to the writers of Grace. you're right that was, that was very truly, revealing that was yeah. trash that was it was trash it was yeah. trash and I, but I'll say this but uh, were you the one who were like I love that she took herself out of consideration well I you thought she was being generous I thought before. I thought I thought <laughs> she was doing what because uh, when I was that was also, like, you don't have to announce it you just do it just do it just you do know it. It, some people do do this where if they win the next season they will they'll they pull they themselves, out themselves out of. for from consideration but often Totally unceremoniously. Especially yes. on a show like yes. Grey's Anatomy where there's many other actresses that are deserving of and often nominated for cast, yes. that very same award. And so I thought to myself when it was announced that she was removing herself from consideration, I you thought never she's being about kind it. to totally. Sandra no. Oh and Chandra Wilson no. who and at the time Kate Walsh who really could have won that award. And she could and have then, come in at the, on that angle. She could have totally been like absolutely but she never said had it. to be nasty. Totally. Yes. She had to be nasty and uh, you can tell that was when I was like oh maybe now the knocked up thing does seem weird. And also like who is she being nasty to? Do you know what I mean? Because like also when she the is people in, who bust their ass to write for her which yeah. sucks. Yeah. yeah. Who bust their ass like six days a week when she's working what three days a week and like i know Uh the multi you know the single cam life is hard writer's life is longer hours and you're not getting anything for free and you're not getting your photo taken and all that i mean and like to do that to them after they got you an emmy it's just so it's crazy crazy. i did wasn't given the material to warrant a nomination like nobody asked you and also it's like on a show like that where they're trying to write for like 12 cast members yeah Uh, yeah and all the things that they must have done and like how much did she get from getting that emmy you know what i mean all the free stuff she's getting all the more money she's getting Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all of that but yeah, no, she's nobody's been her bigger enemy than herself. herself. Yeah, there you go. This is why you need someone, uh, an insider like Tammy Sager. That's why I wanted to ask the question because oh, yeah. I, I did. Totally. I, like honestly, it's this thing that has followed her for so long, and I do think there is a sexist element to it because I do think that men have done way worse and literally been nominated for best director at the Oscars after their indiscretions. But I will say, it's hard for me though because I'm just like I. I don't want a female asshole to get away with it just because male because, assholes yeah. got away with I it. I think you're right. And I, I just I, think assholes just shouldn't get away with yeah, it. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah, I yeah. think if she is indeed confirmed an asshole, which, you know, the the things that she said are asshole ish. I mean, she also does like nice things. She she organizes planes for like chihuahuas. You know what I mean? Like to <laughs> I think rescues. people contain multitudes. <laughs> yeah, I think, people I think contain she contains multitudes. multitudes and I but I just as a writer, I would never want to write for her because right. I just feel like there you, you go. will the shoot. asshole jumped out. And it jumps out after a year of work. It yeah. didn't jump out at the beginning. No, no. the asshole right. jumped out. The asshole. It, it was a jump out. It wasn't a. It wasn't a slow crawl. No, and we asking do know. You. We no. do yeah. know where that comes from, right? Yeah, the, so the, the, when, the, when people say the so and so jumped out, that comes from Charm Monique School. on Charm School saying to Pumpkin, to was pu- it Pumpkin? It was to Pumpkin. Yeah. <laughs> she said. Your, Your behavior, behavior this evening was, was whore-like. Like. The whore jumped, jumped out. And then it jumped, jumped back, back in. in but it, it jumped, jumped out. out. Um, the whore jumped Amazing. out. I mean, 
truly that is this is what reality TV is made for, and the fact that it has had that lasting impact. Huge. Can't believe Monique won an Oscar for Precious and not that moment. And not that moment. <laughs> an Oscar for a VH1 reality show. Okay. It's time for I Don't Think So Honey. I really struggled with my I Don't Think So Honey. I'm sure. So it... much self-hate went into it. Oh! No. <laughs> no, because I'm telling you, I've listened to hundreds of them within like a matter of months and then fully left it until but this morning. No. So this is what we do all the time. This is what we, we do all the time. We barely do this. Um, mine is barely written. So okay. let's, let's should just. Should I go first? You should go first. I have something very. Okay. Mine is potentially very dumb. Okay. But we're going to go. This is Matt Rogers. I don't think so. Any time starts now. I don't think so, Heidi, when people say, hey, it's me. No, bitch. You better say your name if it's the 90s, which oh. is when a lot of people did this. Hey, it's me. Hey, it's me. Well, I just picked up the phone. Where do I have your voice memorized? Oftentimes, the hey, it's me ears, I don't think so, honey, then, because I don't know you. Mm. I don't know you. Uh. If I do, you can just say, hey, hey, it's me. Who's me? Uh. Especially, hey, it's me nowadays. Yeah, bitch, I know who you are. I have a cell phone that says your name on it. Mm. I don't need to hear, hey, it's me. Just start the conversation. Everyone's time is seconds. very valuable. 30 seconds. Hey, it's me me no you have a name that your mother gave you and your mother and your father and whoever whomever named you spent a long time hey tammy it's matt and that is respectful oh, to my parents 15 seconds hey it's me <laughs> hey it's me also i don't like the cadence of it hey it's me hey, like it's, it's just me. like okay this is too familiar Wow. I mean, especially if we maybe if we just got off the Five phone seconds. and then it got disconnected and then you come back on, then hey it's me oh. otherwise I don't think so hon and that's one minute wow so okay masterful down to the second masterful would you ever call me and then say hey, hey it's, it's me. me and I'd be like hey and I'd just get right and into it and you'd get right into it but and that's why you're worth it so this is worth this, it to talk to this is an interesting thing so for people who you do know who you are familiar with you would rather they just cut to the chase but for people you don't know you would, they have to introduce themselves to you yes interesting nothing in between Hey, it's me. No. Hey, it's me is the in between, and, and you don't want that liminal space anywhere. It's here's where here's where hey, it's me rears its head the most in voicemails. Sure. And it's like I know. Hey, it's me. Yeah. But here's the th I know nowadays, and then hey, it's me back in the day when you didn't necessarily know who but was also, calling. But also, like I That's don't confusing. always have people's. I'm such a procrastinator that I don't always put people's phone numbers in, even like it takes one second. Right. So I sometimes just have a phone number well sure. and that's and why so then just you, like that's why you need them to say who they are yeah don't don't hey, assume it's me yeah just don't assume hey it's me is never okay never okay absolutely thank you matt that was that was inspired thank you for giving me the space <laughs> okay um i have one it's very loose but all right we'll it's very it. loose yeah. very loose the bow and yang story oh and his time <laughs> starts now i don't think so honey getting motherfucking stamps in New York City. I was trying to mail in my absentee ballot for Colorado, sweetie, yesterday, and it took me seven different locations to finally pick up a sheet of stamps. Here was Here's the rundown. The post office on Atlantic Avenue right by my apartment, the line was f egregious. I said, no, I don't have the time for this. Uh -huh. Went to three different bodegas. They all said, no, we don't. Went to three different chain of pharmacies, your CVSs, your Dwayne Reeds, your Walgreens. None seconds. of them had stamps, and yet the post the USPS website said falsely claims that they do, and yet, and I was lied to by the internet. Which, I mean, nowadays is hack. When the internet lies to you, it's two on the nose. Fifteen seconds. So finally, I go into Manhattan, go to the post office on Varick. Oh. And thank goodness, the lovely gentleman there uh, gave me a sheet of stamps. And this is not five seconds. Finish strong. Um. The Postal Service is wonderful. They uh, were the first line of defense for all these explosives that went out to all these Democratic leaders. And that's one minute. <laughs> oh, my God. So there you go. So I love it. I love a 55-second negative. I don't think so. I in a five-second, but thank you for but saving lives. But thank you for saving But to my heroes, the Postal Service. But also, Post Office, they usually have, like, a vending machine that you they buy stamps. Oh, do I they? live yeah, for yeah, a vending yeah. machine. In, yeah, the yeah, New York, yeah. in New York City? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw, I saw nary a vending machine in these <laughs> post offices. Well, okay. but that's what can, we say? what can we say? Tammy? So Tammy I time. wrote something, not psyched about it, felt like I Stop. overthought it Stop. and went. No, no, no. Stop this. I know it's going to be brilliant. It's going to be. No, it's, it's not. It tried too hard. No. No. Tammy. Tammy. It. Whatever, whatever. It's I literally really, when people 100 apologize. out of 100 times whenever people say <laughs> no, this. No, whatever, it's a whatever. Never enough moment where we always want more. I don't think so, okay, honey. Is a low ceiling, it. high floor for success. This is uh, Tammy Sager. Okay. 
This is Tammy Sager's I Don't Think So, Honey. Her okay. time starts now. I don't think so, honey. Me ending up in the shittiest of all timelines where the Cubs won was the first sign <laughs> of the simulator getting lazy, flipping some switches that never should have been flipped, no. feeling the outer edges of the Truman Show glitches just in the names oh. of who we are dealing with, like the few Republican senators willing to once in a while stand up. His name is Jeff Flake. Oh. It's seriously Flake, and he's not even going to bother running again. And nope. Flakes, Ivana and Ivanka. Oh. <laughs> okay, and the feeling like there are no repercussions for any misbehavior except for Every the second. arbitrary swats of the universe fly swatter that somehow managed to splatter Al Franken's body against the walls of the U.S. Senate. Oh, Bill no. Clinton is still doing a book tour. No one cares. And nobody blinks an eye when number 45 doesn't decry the murder of a Saudi journalist oh, but instead says seconds. that it was the worst cover up ever. And you can feel his outrage. If only it had been a better cover up he could have looked the other way. Oh. He would have screamed fake news which honestly remember when that was the problem Hillary was facing before oh, the election. And it's like a rapist taking the mantle of victim put from the rape to an oh yeah that's exactly what happened and I don't think so honey when we're accepting a Supreme Court justice saying he was a virgin for years when the allegation was not penetration but almost choking her as he left and fumbled and tried to stuff his drunken privileged young rape dick and failed uh, and he's seen as the victim and I don't think so honey I don't think so honey I'm <laughs> And 14 seconds that and was, every second was essential that was and can I tell you something that was the most words per minute of any I don't think so honey and that puts you in the Guinness Book of World Records and the most holistic all it just covered everything that was ha- that is happening every ill in society it's the I don't think so honey we need for today but I'm also like what is happening in my other timeline oh in your other timeline do you it's, think it's much more positive yeah this but is, I also feel like I'm doing a better job of things do you know what I mean and, and the other timeline yeah I feel like you, my so other you, timeline me is just like a lot healthier yeah you just just like making harder choices that are ultimately better okay do you know what i mean and, but like, yeah. nothing's, i do i do nothing's <laughs> preventing you from from doing that now i though. know except my uh, utter laziness stop <laughs> that's what it is we for all me are too. um oh my goodness uh this is Sadie Cohen. This is Sadie Cohen. <laughs> I can't believe we had Sadie Cohen on the show. Sadie Cohen. Yeah, the, Sadie Cohen Max. from Amsterdam. <laughs> Second, Boom Chicago, Second City Legend, Sadie Cohen. Oh. And writer uh, for every show you like. perfect television Love. show, uh, Tammy Sager. This is this, this, this was is, so great. This and I, I'm this, like, truly, like, I had... Like, I was so excited for this episode and I just oh, expectations clumsy. blown out I of the water. I love you guys. And I love the this t- show. And tears were shed. Tears, tears were, were totally shed. shed. Absolutely. Okay, thanks, you guys. Um, please watch Orange is the New Black um, this upcoming season. Final season. Ooh. Guru. Um, and we love Tammy so much. Wow, You're love the best. You guys. You're the best. Okay, um, we end so up with we end with a song. Great. All the scars of a thousand spotlights All the stars of the shine of the night sky Will never be enough Never be enough For me Never, never, Bye. never enough <laughs> hey, We gotta go Forever Dog This has been a Forever Dog production Executive produced by Brett Boehm Joe Cilio, and Alex Ramsey. For more original podcasts, please visit foreverdogpodcasts.com and subscribe to our shows on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you